This is Jim's pen, though, so you gotta get that. Oh, no, it's a neighborhood council. Oh, it's a neighborhood council pen. I didn't even hear you could take that pen. Oh, no. I that's that's oh, a giveaway. It's a community. You no, know, I won't need one. I left mine in the car. Get me out of here. Let's see. Meeting registration. You mean this is supposed to be the PLU meeting registration? Uh, yeah. Okay. We haven't wrote it on. business is to look over the meeting minutes from last time. You have it, them in front of you. There is one. Do we have a copy of the minutes? Thank you. There is one, uh, one name I didn't get in my notes from somebody who attended but didn't speak. Do you remember? Uh, there, were, there were two people from the neighborhood, Ava Amar and the other person. It wasn't the blonde lady. Oh yeah, we didn't get her name. I have her name. I'll have to call you again. Anyway, so here are the minutes from last time. Please take a quick look. Remind you that there was only one motion last time, and that had to do with approving the request from a stakeholder who wanted to move his business across the street. And then we approved that to send it on to the GHNSC board. And the board approved it. Okay. Um, yes. I don't see the roll call vote for that motion. We don't have roll call votes. We just do it by number. Um, you required to report the committee members and how they voted. This must be new because we have never done uh, it. It's been in the Brown Act revision since 2013. I believe the roll call voting was Assembly Bill 751 that went into effect January of this year. Was that for committees as well as full board? It applies to any legislative body, and standing committees are considered legislative bodies under the definition of the Brown Act. Does the board, so, does the board report this a, a roll call votes? I think we do on certain issues, yeah. Okay. Not all issues. Michael would know which ones. All right. Well, we don't have that for last time. Um, it doesn't hurt to do it for the future. Right, right, right. And I'm not even sure, Bill, I'm not even sure it's going through with Granada himself if it's really required or not to talk to with the city attorney on that. So we can check up with them on that. 
But it doesn't hurt to put it in. I think it's a good thing as far as outreach. All right. For last time, we did not have a roll call vote. We simply had five to one with no abstentions. So it passed and went on to the board, and Jan tells me the board passed it as well. Uh, we spent a lot of time discussing the elder care facility proposed for the corner of Rinaldi and Shoshone. There were two neighborhood members here, plus the people from the developer and the people from Heritage that uh, are the sellers of the property. And uh, the people from Griffin Development indicated that they would be back in October. I got in touch with them. They verified that that is the case, and that is the case. So we let the people in the neighborhood who were particularly interested in this know that we would not be speaking to the developer today. Okay. What's the purpose of the October meeting? The developer is going to come back. When they presented this last month, we had a number of comments from the neighbors from us and they had gathered comments from their neighborhood meeting which they had not uh, reflected in what they presented to us so, so we said that in order for us to make any kind of a decision we needed to have the full information okay, so and we asked them to come back and present that to us and they said probably not September but yes for October I don't think so they the really had planned for this property that was new they were showing us other things they've done and what they were thinking of. Now they're going to come in with the, hopefully. So this the is part. a update and a review of how they're preparing their application. Yeah. Yes. And and things that may see that are not addressed and maybe too much of something else. But um, the neighbors should, should know that uh, yeah, if they want to keep keep abreast of what's occurring, please come. But it's not going to be a decision action. Uh, Bill, there was a letter I sent out to the uh, to the people, and again, it's in your email. Um, I think it's a good idea for you to check your email at least before you come to club meetings, because there's a lot of material sent out to you in email. And uh, there was a letter that was sent out to the people who were at those meetings, who left us their names, the people who spoke at GHNSC about the elder care Thing, explaining the process because okay. we received a bunch of letters 10 to 15 I would say and the wording and the letter from neighborhood people the letters seem to be mostly copied from each other because the yeah, phrasing really, is identical I did check my email on Saturday so okay and so I sent out a letter copied to the board to Plum and everybody else that explains this whole process and tells them that we will be addressing this issue in October, that this is what the process is, and so on. Okay. And I also asked them to check the GHNSD website for further details on the agenda for October. But you didn't correct any of their letters that you remarked that they were making little oversights or errors on, on a few issues. Well, I, I didn't specifically say a paragraph this in your letter is wrong. No, I didn't say anything like that. Yeah. What I did say is what the right view of the process is, what the current process is. It's procedural. All of it is procedural. Mm -hmm. I pointed out to them that there will be many, 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 many occasions for them to speak, to send letters, and so on. And pointed out, as you said, that we're a, an advisory body and not a deciding Right. It points out that we, don't we have made no decisions. We're just yeah. giving the information. As they assumed that we were having meetings and making decisions. Right. And That's the assumption. Along. Right. That comes Michael. And I also, I also sent them a copy of the technical bulletin, the permit thing, so that they can see what the developer has to go through to get to get the approval. So there is this this impression that they don't have to do anything. What, what they can do is, because of the elder care ordinance, is there are many zoning issues they can avoid. They can be put into a lot of residential zones. They're exempt from some parts of the specific plan. They still have to go through a lot of hearings, and the zoning administrator essentially makes the, come on in, makes the final decision. You know, I didn't address that. I wish I had now. And I didn't put that it's out there. circulated yet. to the area. And they have 30 days to respond back. 
saying certain issues are not being addressed in the environmental review. Uh -huh. So uh, that's another step. Anyway, okay. so uh, do we approve the minutes? Did you have a chance to look at them? Hi, Mike. Hi. We're just in the step hey. of approving the minutes. Let me make a comment. Um, no one, because you have board members on this, make sure your agenda states um, uh, board and club. Uh -huh. Okay, because we can have four board members here. Joint meeting, I think I pointed that out to you. It says that. Oh, it does say? It, it, it always has. I didn't, I didn't it see it. It always has. Not this one. Joint oh, yeah, there it is. Okay. Great deal, great deal. That's, I didn't see it there. <laughs> Can we next time let's put it up on the top? Okay. okay. A little bit bigger. But th thank you, Eric. That's, uh -huh. that's great. Hey, how are you? I make a motion we approve it. Well, I have a question. Yes, uh, under that uh, 3B, uh -huh. I, I think there was a question. I remember the bill said that um, the uh, alcohol lands licenses go with the land. Did we say that we're, we're going to? This is just about the. Alcohol, what is the liquor store living across the street? Right. right? Mm -hmm. Are they going to uh, revoke the license of the place where it's currently so we don't have an increase in density? They're going to have to refile across the street. They can't take the license with them. A license go with the land, right. and they can sell that to somebody else who will take their pick up their license. I don't think they're going to do that and have competition across the street. No, no, no. It's a, it, it's a pretty important question because otherwise we increase the amount of alcohol that's being sold in there. And you have alcohol right there in a couple other places. There. So if you, you, you just, if you're saying, no, oh, it doesn't matter, we're just going to move the place across the street. Uh, so could I uh, remind you that this is uh, minutes, so right. and new issues. It's no, no, it's not a new issue. issue. I just didn't know where we left it. It's not reflected in the minutes. It is the I don't other. Think we I, don't, I don't think it was addressed. Concentration is a problem that ABC addresses and also the LAPD. And you're right. There have to be another license in this area. So we are having another license. Well, they all have to file for one to sell the liquor. So not necessarily they have to Wait, file. Uh, I remember Bill was going to come up with the information. He says the property license goes with the land. I, so I are, are you proposing a specific change to the minutes? Can you tell me what you propose to say instead? Yeah, I, I think it should reflect that the license goes with the land and they're going to have to do another ABC application for increasing density to the air. I don't think the conclusion follows that we're increasing density because any new people would have to file again. So that's not a given. And I don't believe we even discussed it. Uh, what Bill's point was is that they will have to refile. That All I know is Bill said they'll come up with the information next time on the, and he said that the cup goes with the land. Okay, I have no recollection of that discussion. In okay. general, every action by the planning commission goes with that site and in that area. And if we're talking about zone changes, variances, Condition to use a liquor license is a condition of use. Right. I, I just want so to. So I don't know where I could find it that says a, your ABC liquor license goes with the site. Okay. So again, because these are minutes, can you tell me what was said last time? Because that's what's relevant for the minutes. Mike, did you I, I, I don't think people are paying attention to what Agnes is saying. Okay. This wasn't brought up in the meeting before. Therefore, you know, this would be a new agenda item. Right now you're looking at the minutes, okay? And the other thing is, is I don't believe that a liquor license goes with the address or the property because liquor licenses are bought and sold all day long, every day, with somebody like when House Market went into the uh, Northwood Center, they bought a liquor license, okay? And so they didn't have to move their store to where they bought the liquor license from. Okay. They bought a liquor license, and there could be a conditional use that says you have to have a liquor license. All right. Well, they'll have to go to ABC and get the name changed on that liquor right. license. Right. 
but it's it's for that site for so many square feet in that business. Okay. Again, what's relevant is what was said last time. Ray, what, what's your recollection? Jan? I know what Jim's is. I don't recall this discussion. I don't remember. Unless Bill had a conversation at the table with one or two people. Well, there was a conversation right here, and Bill said the uh, CUP goes with the land. Yeah, we'll just put that in the record. I'll be fine with that. So, okay. 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 so is anybody uh, want to accept that change? Now, the minutes? our minutes say there is no CUP because the store has been there for 50 years. You're talking about a different one? That's a discussion I remember. Yeah, I remember that. Okay, no, I'll, 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 I remember Bill saying the CUD, the alcohol was Okay, you remember that and three of us don't. So, Bill, did you say, what did you say last time? I would say that at any place, but I don't know exactly that that was a subject we were talking about. They, I, I think I did say, you know, if I'm going across the street, he's going to have to read file for the bill. Well, it says here, he says, he has a letter from the liquor ABC people that they've always turned away the test under age people. I do remember discussing that. But I don't remember going any further. Okay. I don't remember any discussion on whether he was going to fill the liquor license. Okay, how about if I put in applicants will have to refile for a liquor license because that was said. I mean, we just presume because he's moving across the street that he's not going to want to sell the liquor license at his old place to somebody else and be competing with him across the street. Um, but yeah, was any of that said last yeah. time? Again, yeah. this oh, yeah, is minutes, guys. This is right. Well, all I remember was what he said. Okay. I, okay. Okay. Any other items of of question in here? Bill, does your motion still stand? Bill. Does your motion still stand? Uh, oh, yes. With that correction. Okay. okay. And the correction reads, the applicant will have to recall a liquor a license because he does not get to carry the old license with him. That's, that's right. Okay. Is everybody fact, happy it, with that? It dies in one year, 12 months. Well, I was more concerned with the liquor license, but we were talking that the liquor license stays with the property there. Yeah, that's true. Okay. That's another way of putting it. All right, that's what I'd like to have or the site, or the site. You could say that, because the property could be many stores. So does a new person who moves into that store automatically have a liquor license? Somebody could. Just by renting that place? Yeah. Really, I thought they had to apply for that as a new business in the site. What's that? I thought they had to apply. Oh, for a liquor well, license, they have to they go to ABC well, right. and get there, but not with the city of LA. Okay, okay. Okay, we have approval of the minutes as amended. All in favor? Uh, Mike, uh, William Guzman tells me that I have to uh, show a roll call of all votes. Is that the case for committees? I don't believe so. I'll check with Darren, but I don't believe so. And as far as things, ordinary things like minutes, would that apply even for that? You know, you can use the same thing that I do that, um, um, that if no one on the board objects, we will uh, consider this uh, approved. unanimous. Yeah. Or if it's unanimous, then it's everybody right. here. Right. Okay, so approve, everybody to approve? Yeah? Okay. <coughs> All right, moving right along. Uh, we had a single new business item, and that was are you gonna, the. Are you going to do public comment? Oh, thank you. Agenda? Public comment and non agenda items. Do we have anyone here? Yes. First is a, a general statement. Um, I'm very concerned about the neighborhood councils not reaching out to the public stakeholders and letting them know what you're doing and giving them the opportunity to express their opinions at your meetings. Part of the problem is, is this meeting is held in the middle of a work day in the middle of the week, 
and 80% of your stakeholders are not retired or self-employed, and therefore they would have to take time off if they wanted to say something to this committee to get to this meeting. And I don't think that's really fair to the majority of your stakeholders to be having a meeting at a time which attendance for them would be next to impossible to do. Comment? No comments, please. I'm making my comment. I made a standing request to the Granada Hills North Neighborhood Council for the Brown Act to receive copies of all agendas to be sent to me when the agendas are distributed or when the agenda was posted, whichever comes first. Alleged violation number one, the Granada Hills North Neighborhood Council and the Planning and Land Use Committee have allegedly violated the Brown Act by not complying with this request. You used to send me emails, I don't know what happened this time. Violation two, the Granada Hills North Neighborhood Council did not comply with the Department of Neighborhood Empowerment agenda posting requirements because they did not email a copy of the agenda or a message with a link to the agenda to all the stakeholders in the Granada Hills North Neighborhood Council email database. Violation number three, I have not received an ENS notification as of 12 o'clock today. As a side comment, the only reason I knew you had a meeting today was because I programmed into my calendar your regular meeting and it notified me at 12 o'clock that today there's a planning and land use meeting. Okay? Otherwise, I had no knowledge that your meeting was going to occur. The agenda does not state who the planning and land use committee members are, nor are the committee members listed on the website page for the committee. This is an alleged Brown Act violation. That's two minutes. Violation five, the PLU committee is not publicly disclosing their roll call votes or motions submitted to the Granada Hills North Neighborhood Council Board that for approval. That is two minutes. This is an alleged violation of the Brown Act for Assembly Bill 751. Violation six, agenda item four, there is no attachment with the technical bulletin or link to the document. This is an alleged Brown Act violation. I request that the Granada Hills North Neighborhood Council and the Planning and Land Use Committee take the appropriate steps to avoid these procedural violations in the future and that they issue a written unconditional statement to comply. And just as a matter of, you know, I come, you go to review minutes and it doesn't say on your agenda you're reviewing minutes, nor do you post your minutes on your website. So please. The public wants to know what you're doing. No, you want to know, not the public. That's his comments over. Okay. Thank you. And I will yes. leave with you. Thank you. To pass Thank out you. To everyone. All right. Thanks. These are available in the middle of the table. If you would like one. Any other public comment? I may have one, but I don't. I don't know if I'm in the right meeting or where I'm at. Okay, so uh, tell us where, what you want to my, talk about. My, uh, issues. I'm looking into trying to do an event over at the Balboa Park. Are you guys have anything to do with that here? No. Balboa Park? Yeah. That would be the Lake Balboa. That would be the Lake Balboa near Rick House. No, not Lake Balboa. It's over here off of, uh, it's off of past Rinaldi. Is that Granada Hills? That's considered Granada Hills. Yes, but so uh, which part? Park? Um, it's North Valley Youth Hall. Oh, yes. Hall. Oh, okay. Thanks. That is our, our area, yes. And please stand up since uh, that this is the this is correct the place to talk about that. And tell us uh, and tell I us found you how guys we can on help the website, you. So. You guys were just reading this. Can, can I just ask your name? My name is Brenda Richards. Okay. Brenda, are you from an organization? I am from an organization. However, I don't live in the city of Granada Hills, but I live right here in Port Ranch. Okay, so but you're about to be here. What organization are you with? I'm with um, Plays and Grades, and Plays and Grades is an organization of uh, athletes and uh, education. My husband's been running this business for like six, seven years. So now we went over there and we talked to a guy named Oscar. I don't see him over there. Yet. Did you see him no, no, no. Well, he, we asked him about the event. And we we're trying to do a big event for uh, Pop Warner football players from here to San Gabriel Valley. What they do in Vegas is called the, uh, he's, he's I get nervous when I'm tired. Don't worry about it, Tell me she can <laughs> anyway, stop you. So anyway, it's a, it's a turkey bowl that they do somewhere in Vegas, and it's for kids, it's for education. So we went over there and we talked to some guy named Oscar and asked him about it, where they, 
where they're going to be using their film on Thanksgiving weekend. And he, he said they weren't going to be doing it, but he had to get back to us about being able to use it. So I was wondering if there's anyone here that can give us any information on that, or if it's possible, or what's the rules and regulations on the field, or what? All right, thank you. Um, we are not directly in charge of that land, uh, so all that we could do is help you on a personal basis and find the right people to contact. Okay. So I'm not even sure whether it's county or city land. I heard it was like it, owned it, by the DWD. It, it, is, it is owned by MWD. At least. Okay, two. and um, that's a completely separate operation. It's a AYSO in South Baltimore. And they have their own board of directors. They have, um, and I'm sure that the sign out in front um, would probably have a contact number, wouldn't it? It did. Okay, I, I know some of the people associated with the AYSO, and I suggest you call the uh, head of the Granada Hills Chamber of Commerce, Lainey Caspi, and she uh, knows all the people up there, and she can uh, at least give you the right contact information. If you don't get your answer, then please let me know and we'll see what we can do. But uh, all we can do is get you in contact with the right people. Okay. The phone number for uh, Ms. Caspi, which is C-A-S-P-I, is 818-457-8992. She is the head of the Chamber of Commerce for Granada Hills and she knows who the right people are. She's not the person, but she'll tell you who is. Okay. All right. Thank you. And again, if if um, if you can't um, get enough information, please give me a call back. Okay. And uh, we'll help you from there. Okay. Are you out here listed somewhere? Uh, yes. Can you uh, turn that over, and I'll give you my cell phone number. Okay. Eight one eight. Eight zero four. Eight zero four. Eight zero zero nine five. And my name is Agnes Lewis. Any other public comment? No? All right. So moving on to new business. I received an email from the stakeholder. Uh, there is a stakeholder request for converting the first 120 feet along Woodley Avenue north of San Fernando Mission, in other words, right here, uh, to temporary parking, the 15, 20-minute parking zone. I received an email from him at 1247 today that he cannot make it here from Orange County, so this item is tabled until he can come into coming up here and discussing it with us. So we're going to move on now to ongoing business. The most important item that we have uh, working at the moment is the proposed for, proposal for an elder care facility at the corner of Rinaldi Street and Shoshone. The developer came last meeting, presented a proposal, which was, parts of it were based on the current land, and parts of it were based on concept drawings. There were a lot of feedback that he got from a neighborhood uh, meeting that he organized. And those, when we asked him, he said he had not reflected yet on the proposal and we had questions about parking about uh, air conditioning units about uh, the look of the property facing the street and a lot of other issues which he was not able to answer at the time or at least said that he was flexible in addressing all of those issues so we asked him to come back and present a response he said he could not do that in September, it was too fast, and, but they expected to be back in October with a proposal that reflected all of those questions and concerns, or what they could do about those questions and concerns. Meanwhile, because this one committee has not recently addressed anything like an elder care facility, we reviewed some of the documents for this at our, I believe it was July meeting, and now I have in front of you a copy of the original elder care ordinance, which I would like to go over with you paragraph by paragraph to make sure that we all have the technical information necessary to 
address this issue. You have all, we have all gone through the technical bulletin at the prior meeting, and this was in all of your emails. And this is the base ordinance that we're going to be talking about today, and this was updated with the ordinance that we discussed last time. the people within 1,500 feet of the proposed elder care facility. And some members of Plum went to ask questions and find out more about the proposal. So a lot of the members of the community sent us letters. They appear to be from one group of people. And I say that because the wording is almost identical from letter to letter including, as I mentioned in one of my emails, there is an error in one of them, and that error is propagated throughout all of them. So evidently, they're, they're a group, as opposed to individual people, which, of course, does not in any way negate their, their opinions. But because there were some misunderstandings of the process evident in that letter, and uh, some assertions in the letter about uh, what the developer said, didn't say, represented, misrepresented, whatever. I wanted to get on the record what the normal procedure is for a neighborhood council's committee, plum committee, to consider a proposal and what happens, what the steps are, and give them also an insight into what happens at the city level. There seem to be reflected in the neighbor letters a misconception that elder care facilities were exempt from all the rules and they could just be plopped in any place and be automatically approved. The elder care ordinance, as you will see, makes it easier for elder care facilities than for other developments to go into a particular place. For example, they are allowed to be in every, almost every residential zone and agricultural zones and all, all commercial zones. They're exempt from some requirements of the specific plan. So they have preferential treatment in that way. However, they are still required to go through a full set of hearings for the zoning administrator. Their representations they have to make to the zoning administrator and things that they have to um, prove that they are going to do for their development. And so my letter to the community, which is three pages long, is entirely addresses the issue of procedure and what happens to correct the misconception of what, what the process is. So it's not a slam dunk. It does not automatically get approved. It does get preferential treatment. So I think that brings you up to date on where we are with the community. Does anybody have any questions or comments on that part of it? Has that letter been mailed out to? It was emailed to all the people for whom we had email addresses, including to the board and including to club members. It should have gotten to me last Thursday or Friday. Oh. Okay. Yes. So it didn't go to everybody in the database, so? No. Okay, then I'd like to make a public information act request for a copy of that letter. Sure. You email it to me, and I believe you have my email on file. Would you like a hard copy? I can make it for you, you right know, now. No, the email copy will be okay. sufficient. It's paper I'll take a hard copy. Okay. Can I ask? Okay. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Let me note that before I go on. Okay, any other comments or questions on, yes, Joe? We have a certain outreach plan for this, for your fund. Beg your pardon? 
Did you there are certain that? outreach plan for your function. I'm kind of like lost, and I know outreach needs to be done. Here. As, you, as, I, as I mentioned in the letter that you received a copy of, we plan to do, once, once the developer comes and presents their complete proposal, then we intend to organize a neighborhood meeting with notice to all the same people that they noticed before, it's 1,900 or um, 1,500 feet around the area. Probably would be a good idea to send that to the whole GHNC database, although that may not necessarily include all the people within 1,500 feet. Okay. The city usually requires notice. Thank you so much. The city usually requires notice from a developer only for 500 people within 500 feet. The developer reached out to 1,500, and I believe that we should probably reach out to 1,500 as well. Uh, you know, Rick, did you guys go like a, a, a radius thing? So you get Granada Hills North or Granada Hills South also? Yeah, we get a radius rather than okay. from the corners of the property. Granada Hills South is aware because we are kind of in contact with them too. So it did hit Granada Hills South. Well, I haven't heard it from Granada Hills South, so that's what I was wondering. Okay. And we, we have kept them, uh, we have given them copies and kept them abreast. Maria. Oh, Maria, that's good. Um, Again, this is in the north area, but out of courtesy, we gave well, the we gave the information to some of them. The facts, yeah, yeah. Right across the street. Yeah. Um, the other thing I have is, are we inviting the people in the community to attend, doing a little bit of special outreach to attend the next meeting, where the developer will explain? Because that's that's what we should invite. We we are sending we have sent this letter and the information about the October 18th meeting to everyone who sent us a letter or who was on email distribution lists regarding this project. Everybody whose email we could reasonably get. Okay, and, and I'll, let me tell you what we're going through on their email blast with Aaron on the website. Uh, there was a controversy between him blasting out to everybody and him blasting out to nobody. What we're going to do is we're going to filter through everything. We're going to contact all the email subscribers and say, what are you interested in planning land use, this, this, everything. Okay? That way, people will get only what they want. And they can change at any time. But we haven't done this yet. So, you know, uh, I just want to make sure that the people who are on the email list Okay, so you were talking about what the outreach committee is planning to do. No, that's Aaron. Right now, Aaron has a lot of control over our email blast. That's just the way it's working. Uh, so I just want to make sure everybody's covered. And how about the people who haven't contacted um, the committee? You know, they're, I mean, in, in the area. Well, again, we in the, before we have the neighborhood meeting, which is probably not for several months at this point, and just as a guess, we would, as we have in major development things before, we would send letters to the people in the immediate vicinity, paper letters, and we would email everybody for whom we have an email address. Okay, but we're not at that point we're not yet. There yet. We're not there yet, and we're not going to be there next month or the month after that. Yes, Mike? Uh, I, I just would suggest that we think twice about, you know, Anytime you're dealing with data, somebody's got to be totally on top of it. All neighborhood councils are volunteer operations. All right. I, I think that it's probably better to oversend stuff than undersend it. And that when we try to target, if you want this, if you want that, if you want this, or you want that, um, it's probably better just to send everybody information. So just a thought. And we did budget. To send out information when the time came. Oh, yeah, we have but we're not at that time quite well, yet. My, my question is this when is the time? Do you, do you contact them after you've made a decision? No, 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 no Jim, no. Jim so, you got this letter in your email and it explains the process. Well, I think you should contact them sooner, actually. And number two, as soon as you get the information, you should get that information out to them. Well, we expect to get the information in October. And it may not even be complete at that point yet. Oh, oh no, I, I realize. It might go back and forth several times. Right. Oh, oh yes. no, I realize that, but 
they should have some place where they could easily get the information. Yes. Sir. So, so what I was thinking is we could throw up if the committee doesn't want to do all, I could do it independently. We should throw up just a website on our own, just on this that has uh, information from both Hillcrest, the developer, and uh, all the people. I, I don't think it's a good idea for for us to do a separate website. If you want to do a, a special tab or forum or whatever on our own website, I don't think as a neighborhood council we should go starting off a different website for this. No. Well, we don't have a blog, so we can't. You know, but when we, we can't get stakeholder information to give us their opinions. Well, the only way they can give us our opinions now is by an email to the whole board or when they come to a meeting. There should be something else with them. And yep. to keep them online so they're not going after wrong things. So they're, they're going to have a chance. They're going to be getting a letter. And they're going to get, we have no idea what the final is going to be. Or, right. or, and we're not going to decide that until after the public meeting with them. And we're not right. going to send out And there's going to be several more meetings before. after that that they right. can attend. Right, I understand that, but you should let so them. So it's a little early, I think. You should so. do your outreach at the earliest point at that meeting where they come and explain to the board, right? What are we going to explain? We don't know what their proposal is. Well, I mean, that's where they should hear it. Or am I wrong? Uh, well, you know, I, I think you're, preliminary. you're, you're way too preliminary, Jim, I believe, okay, in, in that it's, it's not a up in the air at this point. Once there's a little more definition, as is explained in my letter, once once there's a little more definition of what the project is, what it's going to look like, what things, how many parking places they're going to have, because they heard a, a whole bunch of stuff in, in their own meeting, and they said that they would react to those. Okay, so let's see what the reaction is. Let's see what what they change. Let's see what the proposal is. There's no proposal on the table at this point. And we don't we don't want to get something else out there. There's already a lot of miscommunication. Right. So we don't want to add to that miscommunication. Right. We're trying to kind of quell that at this point. Right. So when the developers come back and give the information at a public club meeting, that's when we ask the stakeholders to come back, right? They can. They can. Anybody they can. can come to but plum. we're not just asking them to come to a plum meeting. We are proposing to go out to them, to reach out to them in a neighborhood meeting that unlike the one that the developer held, this one would be controlled by the neighborhood council. The developer would be invited. The seller's heritage would be invited. All of the Granada Hills community, particularly the people within a certain radius of the property, would be invited to that. That would be the most thorough forum of presenting what the actual proposal is and what the actual reactions are now that supposedly some changes have been made. And it will be and it one is, thing. They have not um, right. submitted any proposal to the city at this point. Okay. Oh, and that so comes later on. Yeah, right. that comes much later on. Right. They're just testing. Uh, is this good or you know? Right, what exactly, think about exactly, yeah. exactly. And they got they got the, the the neighborhood feedback on what they were thinking at the meeting that they organized. We're proposing to organize, and we told them this way in the beginning. We are we will have a neighborhood meeting controlled by us, so that we can make sure that all sides are fairly heard at that meeting. Any community member, any developer, any government member, anybody who wants to can comment on whether they think this is a good idea, what they think ought to be changed, whether the whole thing ought to be scrapped. That is the big meeting we're all sort of planning toward. Okay, do you okay. need to rent the hall for that or a big meeting location? We or probably will. We probably okay. will have to. But this comes after they come back to Plum and say this is what we've come up with. Yes, because yes. we have no specific request on the table yet. Okay. So and we no want to make sure request. that they get, the community gets one correct answer to what's being proposed. Not like what we see flying around yeah, right now. Yeah, uh, they're also going to have all over the place and they'll right. repeat it and all that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. So that, that is the plan. Okay, any other comments on, on this part of it? Yes. Uh, notification, you are talking about uh, going beyond the 500 feet, you say 1,000, or did you say 15? 
Well, the developer says that they sent it to 1500. The last time? Yes. At, in, at the church? Yes. Oh, yeah. Well, that's good as, as long as they got that list because that takes a lot of time and mailing it, it takes a lot of expenses. So they have some kind of anticipation. What Plump has done before when we didn't necessarily have all the information on the mailing list is we just mailed to everybody on a specific streets mm -hmm. in the area and approximated that distance. Yeah. Well, we're working together on this, right, with, with Hillcrest. You don't mind giving us a list of people who said Well, it's not Hillcrest. The developer oh, would be willing to do that. Yeah. That's all right. Uh, the developer, uh, Griffin, yeah. property. And they're, yeah. they're just the sellers. Right. They're not yeah. the developer. Right. Yes, uh, that's a good question. Yeah, again, it's all work. I'll have to ask them, but I think they would be willing to share those. And then, what other other information they were talking about? PowerPoint or something like that, or, or something. If we could get that information out, so we could put it on the web for everyone to see. Once it's correct, and a little bit more. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. My bank just goes on. So again, it's, uh, he's the wrong person to ask. But, but yes. All right. Can we put this up to bed now? Okay. Moving on to the ordinance, and I'm sorry to do this to you guys, but it's important, so we're going to read it, read all of it together, because I want to make sure you read it. Okay. So I think we can skip the paragraph above the people of the city of Los Angeles. All that that says is that this is addressing elder care. It defines now in section 1G elder care facilities and what they are. Please note that on starting on the second sentence under 1G, it says, need not apply for a specific plan exception pursuant to subsection F of this section, blah, blah, blah. But need only apply for and receive an approval pursuant to section 14.3 of this code. This is, again, the preferential treatment that they get. And then if you go to 14.3, there's some jumping back and forth that they can have to do. You will see that they explain, we'll come back to 14.3 later, but you will see what, it's, what the whole thing is about. It's about the elder care unified permit and how you get that, okay? So going back to page one, Now it defines Alzheimer's dementia care housing, what that is. They have to be licensed by the California Department of Social Services, providing 24-hour care for people suffering from Alzheimer's disease or other diseases resulting in dementia. Residential units shall be guest rooms only. They may be a component of an elder care facility. Let me take sideways into this. What's being proposed is an elder care facility that combines two of these sections. Okay. Moving on, assisted living care housing. Residential housing that is licensed, people living in it have to be 62 or older. They consist either of dwelling units or guest rooms. Full-time medical service is not necessary. Okay, thank you. Okay, then it defines elder care facility. One functionally operated facility which provides residential housing for people 62 or older which combines in one facility two or more of the following types, senior independent housing, assisted living, care housing, skilled nursing, or Alzheimer's dementia care. Does this say anywhere that you don't, you, you can't have a combination of many of these uh, categories? No, it specifically no. says that you can. You yeah. can. Yes. A little bit of this, a little bit of that, but there's certain requirements for each one. Right. As having to do with parking. Or right. right, exactly, and it gets into that yeah. later. Or the size okay. of their living facilities. 
Now, what is proposed is a combi. Oh, and uh, sorry, go on to page two. It, it defines senior independent living, 62 and older. May include common dining areas, other community rooms. Full time service medical is not required. And it may be a And then skilled nursing care, where they do require this. This proposal before us is not skilled nursing. It is Alzheimer's, and I'm not sure whether it's assisted living or senior independent housing. They're very similar. Assisted living Maybe. is what I've heard. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So reread for a moment the assisted living care facility. 62 years. Or older require assistance with two or more non-medical activities of daily living, as defined by the Department of Social Services. Okay, that's what's being proposed. The rest of page two is about where to add all of this information, so I think we can skip it for the moment. Go on to page three. And here we get into the parking requirements for these people. It's all predefined. If you have an assisted living, you require one automobile parking space for each dwelling unit, or one automobile parking space for each guest room. So not by the number of people, but by the number of rooms. And Alzheimer's requires 0.2 automobile parking spaces for each guest bed. Mostly because Alzheimer's people aren't likely to be driving around. So the number that I remember hearing from them was 40 Alzheimer's. Is that yeah. changeable? I, I don't know. I don't remember those numbers. Okay. So, yeah. yeah. But that, that sounds right. It's a smaller number. Okay. So. Again, these are approximate, not to be taken. It's one of the things that remains to be finalized from the developer. But if it's 40 Alzheimer's, that would mean eight parking spaces. And uh, that would leave 60 or so units of assisted living, which would require 60 more parking spaces. So this would show that the 50 that they were proposing are not sufficient, according to this regulation. So this is what we suggested and the neighbors suggested to them is that parking was not enough. Here is the, what we need to look at. And now since we're not looking at senior independent housing but assisted living, I think we can skip that portion. going to go to uh, page four, reduced on-site parking, where... That's it's exactly where I am. Okay. Yeah. Uh, take a look at 38B. It says parking spaces may be reduced to 25% of the number otherwise required. Reduced number of parking spaces provided for each development shall be determined by a zoning administrator. Okay, so then that's at a hearing. So I, I suspect that the developer is going to do is, uh, what are you looking for? Can you no, I think it? I set my copy of this down. Oh, there's another copy of this here if you like. So 38B says that regardless of what the requirement was for 60 or 65 parking spaces, you could reduce that to 25% if the zoning administrator 
besides that, based on a lower anticipated parking needs of, a, of the occupants or the availability of public trans access. That's probably tied in with the type of patients that you have. Yeah, and whether the patients are bedridden or they're not because Alzheimer problems. Or well, the Alzheimer's is in the unit. Can I make a comment? Yes. Please. This I read as a healthcare professional with a lot of possible worry because they may say that many of their patients don't drive cars, whatever. But I will tell you, as patients drive less and have higher needs of care, there will be more people caring for them. So you will have people coming in to care for them, other things, instead of them perhaps driving. And I don't think as a healthcare person, I would minimize the fact that these people can't drive because then more people are going to be coming in to service them than I've seen them. So since, since the developer, the last I heard, was proposing around 50 parking spaces, he, I presume, is going to try to prove the point that this should be reduced on the basis of this paragraph because they really don't need that many. But that is definitely up, that is not set by regulation, but is up to the zoning administrator. Well, the developer did make a statement, though, in both talks that if, it, if we want him to increase the parking, he's having to increase it. He actually cut it down for landscaping purposes, is what he's told us. And he's, if we'd like him to raise it, we'll be happy to raise it. There's plenty of room mm -hmm. for a lot more parking. Yes. He was just trying to make more space for landscaping, is what he said. If we want to raise, he'll, he'll raise it. Okay, okay. I think we we'll want to consider the neighbors around there screening well yeah let's let's see what they come back with in october yes jim i don't think number 38 applies because it has to do with rd rd r3 r8 r4 r5 zones the commercial zone this is zoned agricultural a1k right uh no yeah uh, some of it is and some of it is zoned residential i forget the residential zone okay in, in that case bill don't they go to the more restrictive use of the combination zone? Yeah, I think it's uh, A1K. Uh, dash 1K. Right. Yeah, and which really doesn't apply to much of anything because the conditional use is over, sees the whole thing. The A1 is that's agricultural, residential, so that's not the Probably not what? That doesn't apply. So for these zonings, you can reduce it. I don't know if it applies for the agricultural zone. Okay. Uh, I, I think there's something that we need to be aware of. Yeah. Or find out. Yeah. We so we'll, we'll note that as a, as a question. Right. We have to actually have such a report 124. Okay. Under page five, toward the top of paragraph E, this is an important thing that some neighbors and some people on the committee brought up at the last meeting. What happens if this ceases to be an elder care facility and goes on to another use? And what this paragraph, and it's addressed in a couple more places in here, says that, um, the owner shall furnish and record an agreement Providing that should the use change, the owner will develop the parking spaces to meet the requirements of blah, 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 section, so on. So in other words, if he gets any preferential parking and the use changes, he has to come up with the additional parking spaces that would have been required. With me on that? Yeah, that's really important. To one of the other groups that I want to do. Yeah. Somebody said people are going to be. Okay, I'm sorry, what? That's just to any other of the uses outlined in this ordinance, right? So if it changes uh, uh, away from uh, an elder care facility in any way, then they have to come up with the additional parking spaces. You need to make yourself a copy of the ordinance that we're going over. Did you have any chance to print one at home? You can have mine back. We'll just make a copy of it if you like. 
It's all right. I'll we'll share it with this nice person here. All right, so we're, we were on page five. <laughs> Okay, so again, the purpose, uh, we're into the purpose statement, they wanted to create a simple process for approval to facilitate the processing of application in elder care facilities. That was the whole reason for this thing, to make it easier, this ordinance, to make it easier to put elder care facilities in. That does not exempt them from the rules, but it does provide for a single permit application. Now, under B, the zoning administrator is identified as a decision maker. May you find a permission to permit an elder care facility to be located in the lot of lots in the A1 through R3 zones, or in the RAS3, R4, RAS4, R5, and all C zones. So in all of those zones, an elder care facility may be, may be put in. We're on page five. One thing I noticed about the annex is it also lists paint provisions, which may be one of the things that we will deal with later. Because we had a lot of people who were concerned about the center of it being quite hot. Yeah, and there was some sort of power in the middle. Right. They, they said they would eliminate. Right. So we don't so know. If we that's don't know. Be, but that is one of that's one of the areas. We're talking okay. About. Now I think this is crucial. Let me read this. When an elder care facility does not meet the use area or height provisions of the respective zone contained in this chapter or the requirements of any specific plan, supplemental use district, T classification, Q condition, D limitation, or citywide regulation adopted or imposed by city action, the zoning administrator can decide to exempt this or to set the conditions to lower. No, this says, is the preferential. It says the zoning administrator shall ensure that it is in conformance with the provisions of this section. Not that it's going to lower anything. That's not the way we read. Are we reading B? B, the last sentence. The last sentence. Sure, there is a conformance. Of this section, okay, so you don't have to meet the, the necessarily the, the Q conditions, the height use an area as long as you meet what this ordinance is talking about. You don't have to meet the specific plans. Yes? Uh, I looked up section 12.21 uh, A for you and it addressed senior independent housing, assistant living, care housing, and it goes on and on and lists all, a lot of the categories that we just talked about. Uh -huh. And it said that the zoning administrator can reduce parking by 50% if they have those kind of patients. Right. And that's the table, I think, that they yes. show you. Okay, right. And that would be something that we could possibly talk to them about. Or an unusual area that that's not close to shopping, close to things. It's a residential community. Yeah. If you look at the majority of these places, they're kind of tucked in even with the neighborhoods to places that are closer to commercial type places. And we're really not. So we're a little bit different of an, of an area where they're planning on putting in. Well, the, the manager may not care to have too many people that will be coming and going in their car, going down to the shopping center or something. They may, but if they're going to do an independent living type thing, you are going to get some of those. You are going to get some of those. Okay. That you'll probably get quite a lot. Anybody going cross-eyed yet on this thing? <laughs> okay, you're over. So it, I think the main takeaway from this is that the zoning administrator has a lot of discretion. The purpose of this ordinance is to make it easier for elder care not to exempt them from things, make it easier for them to go through, and uh, therefore the zoning administrator is given a lot of latitude on uh, his findings and what his decisions are. Now 
Now, the bottom paragraph on page five, continuing on to the top of page six, essentially says, anytime you see the word notwithstanding, essentially what it says is ignore everything else I just said, and this rules. Okay? And what it says here is, again, that the zoning administrator has a lot of latitude on finding both the one, whether it adheres to the principles of the specific plan, to other sections of this code, the zoning administrator shall have the initial decision-making authority relating to site plan approval. So this property is located in the A1, like we talked about, uh -huh. and it says A1 through R3 zones, and then it picks up all the others zoning classifications except industrial. Mm -hmm. So it's not very likely that someone's going to have five and a half acres of industrial land and they're going to build a project like this. Right. So what we're really saying is so far uh, they need to be As far as placing it there, yes. But as you will find later on, the zoning administrator also has to decide that it meets the uh, the requirements of the area that it needs the mm -hmm. it's appropriate to the area and again a lot is put on the zoning administrator more than more than usual they they always have a lot of latitude but in this particular case more than usual yeah but it also restricts them whenever you see notwithstanding the provisions of section 11.57 C we have to know what section 11.57 C is because that's the restrictions on the zoning Minister, he's you know he doesn't have unlimited capacity, but he does have uh, some discretion. Uh, I looked up uh, conditional use uh, projects to the zoning administrator. He has 52 categories, and this is a 53. And every all the actions that he makes and signs off for is appealable to the area planning commission. Yes. So since this is so controversial. I would expect it to go the full length. Yeah, and I point that out in my letter to the to the appeal to the area commission. Now, this whole ordinance is going back to page one. This section one, it, these are all additions to section eleven point five seven. So those are all the, all those little sections are, are the restrictions. Right. The zoning administrator has to go with yeah. right. okay, now, those. Now, take a look at application for permit, uh, paragraph C. Page 6. Paragraph C. It talks about how, how they apply for a permit. The application shall include a description of how the proposed elder care facility meets the findings set forth in this section. And then it goes paragraph D's procedures. If the zoning administrator fails to act on an application within the time provided, the applicant may file a request for a transfer of jurisdiction to the Area Planning Commission. An applicant or any other person aggrieved by a decision of zoning administration Administrator may appeal the decision to the Area Planning Commission. That's pretty standard. Now here is the E. It's probably going to be appealed. Yeah. E, well. You don't even know what it is. Yeah. E, findings for approval. This is, I think, a key area. In order to grant the approval, the zoning administrator must find that the strict application of the land use regulations on the subject property would result in practical difficulties or unnecessary hardships inconsistent with the general purpose and intent of the zoning regulations. In other words, the zoning administrator has to find that the original zoning regulations would be too onerous. And then he, the zoning administrator must also find that the elder care facility meets all of these requirements will not be materially detrimental or injurious to properties or improvements in the immediate area, 
will provide services to the elderly, such as housing, medical services, social services, or long-term care to meet the citywide demand. Three, will not create an adverse impact on street access or circulation in the surrounding neighborhood. Four, consists of an arrangement of buildings and structures, including height, bulk, and setbacks, off-street parking, loading areas, lighting, landscaping, trash collection, and other pertinent improvements which are or will be compatible with the existing and planned future development on neighboring properties. And five is in conformance with any applicable provisions of the general plan. Okay? So in other words, they have to be good neighbors, essentially. So the zoning administrator has to find. And I suspect that the neighbors who have an objection to this would probably be looking at whether it met these, because these are hard to define therefore open to, uh, to latitude by the decision maker. Okay. On page seven, conditions of approval. Zoning administrator may impose those conditions based upon written findings which it deems necessary to protect the best interest of the surrounding property or neighborhood or to ensure that the development is compatible with the surrounding properties or neighborhood or to lessen or prevent any detrimental effect on the surrounding property or neighborhood, or to secure appropriate development in harmony with the objectives of the general plan. Now the general plan, although it has not been approved for this area, calls for residential properties north of Renault. No, that's a community plan. Oh, general plan, you're right. General <coughs> plan, I misread this. The community yeah. plan is part of the general. Yeah. The community plan has not been approved for Granada Hills as of right now. But it does call for residential. This is sort of this residential. Is kind of residential, residential yeah. Is yeah. But I think this last couple of things in this one are the ones where the people in the area are going to get the majority mm -hmm. of the discussion going. Right. Is it compatible with the neighborhood? Right. And you could argue that either way. Uh, going on, I don't think we need to worry about fees for our discussions. H is existing uses. Conditions included in any special district ordinance, exception, conditional use, this is the last sentence. Conditional use or variance which authorize the use shall also continue in effect. They don't have any there, do they? No, they have little houses. They're, right, I, I'm sorry, I didn't they, quite they hear your question. Uh, entitlements or anything like that now. Right? No. Yeah. And then I, development of site. Pursuant to the provisions of the section, new buildings or structures may be erected, enlargements may be made to existing buildings and the existing housing types within the elder care facility may be extended on the approved site, provided that development plans are submitted to and approved by the zoning administrator. The zoning administrator may disapprove the plans if he or she finds that it does not conform to the purpose and intent, etc., etc. In other words, if they can come back and ask for more, but if the zoning administrator has to agree that it's justified. Okay. J, reduction of site. No part of this can be uh, reduced. reduced or sold off or put to another use. Once it's approved for elder care, it remains elder care. Yeah, it's firm. Yes, it's great. Yeah, and I think that was one of the things that some people were worried about, what would it become. That's the kind of thing we were worried about when the Jets thing was being discussed. Yeah, exactly. Because, you know, if that system failed, could they make it into an apartment complex? Yeah. Yeah. This, you don't want to do that either. Correct, and that's one of the major issues that many people who are not in favor of this have. No, I can't blame them. Okay. No, I don't think this will happen. As long as it says, Facility or now it shall be done forever until whatever. Okay, uh, page eight, change of use. 
No housing type within an elder care facility may be changed to a different housing type unless they restart the whole process all over again. Okay, L, discontinuous of use. If it's abandoned or discontinued for, for at least one year, it may not be reestablished unless reauthorized. So if they stop using it for a year, they have to restart the whole process again. And I think that, again, is something that there are people that are concerned about it. So we should just put it in our, let's watch it. Nothing we can do with today. And then revocation, the same, proced the same procedure as everything else. And it's not addressed specifically in this. Yeah, but we have to look them up on that 1224A and 1224A. I'm sorry, what, what are we looking up on? No, I mean, I mean, you said it's not addressed. They're referring to other sections. Right, 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 right. I'll get you those other sections. So we got okay, but it's no no difference, so I don't think we need to worry about it. I see something here that is interesting. What's that? The filing fee is 5265 and a fee for each appeal. I know, that seems horrendous, doesn't it? That's Stop. I don't think that's a horrendous fee for a developer. Well, well, let's say a neighborhood wants to appeal it. You want to get it right to a neighborhood. Right. Well, I'm not sure if that's a, a, a fee for the neighborhood, right? I think that might be a fee for the developer. It is. If he wants to appeal the decision with those guys. There's two right. separate fees. The, right. the uh, opposition has much lower. Right. Okay. Right. In other words, this fee is then for the developer, not for the public. Correct. Right. Right. Yeah. There is it a doesn't fee say that. There is a fee for the public. Yeah. yeah. But it's but much less. They don't, if they're going to do that, they should have had that here too. Well, it's very small. But it's, yeah. well, it's not free. They should let people know. You know. It's not free. No. Uh, two meetings ago, we went through the technical bulletin, which is, again, what is this? This was policy, not an ordinance, but a policy by the okay, city you. planning. And it essentially rewords or re or repeats a lot of the stuff in this ordinance. And it talks about the elder care facility unified permit and how you go about getting the permit and all the stuff you have to do which is a summary, again, of the ordinance in more English rather than legalese, okay? Essentially, I, I don't really find any big differences. Okay, you know, do you feel more or less educated on this issue? Oh, yeah. I think every time I read it, I pick something out of it. Right. And I think uh, it's incumbent on us to reread it and reread it and reread it until we really understand all of the ins and outs of it. Another good because thing. Because particularly so because this is such a hot issue. Yes, go ahead, Jim. No, another good thing you can do is what I always do is I go through another example of something where this uh, building was tried for and one would fail and one for where it succeed. Uh -huh. uh, I, I know Tarzana Neighborhood Council worked on this. If you want, I could get that, but you get a lot of ideas from looking at other people's things. It's hard just to read this That's and come up with something. So I, I don't know if you guys do that on this board or if not. Is it, well, we haven't. I know you do. We right? haven't had Well, you have to make five findings, and you have to make each one. If if one you can't make, you you are required to deny the project. Right. So. Um, but, Find uh, it's statements depending on what the one through five are, and they have to say, well, uh, I put conditions in there to protect the residential area, and this is how it will be developed and, and changed. And you have to address each one because if you don't, then you, you create a weakness in, in the in the uh, operation. So the should be required to have five five Five. Five different statements. One is on environmental, one will be on the general plan, one will be the protection of the residential area, 
One will be transportation in and out. I mean, they so all different if categories. You, if you only really want to contest one, that doesn't help you at all. Well, if you can win your case. Yeah, you're, you're talking about different ICU. Uh, you guys are talking share an experience of one of these things that was denied in one of the cases that it was denied upon, if you'd like to hear. Yes, in just one second. Uh, I believe you guys were talking about two different things, because he was talking about what the zoning administrator must find, the findings, before he can approve it. And you were talking about how you can appeal it. Oh, yeah, okay. Okay, which is a different, different requirement. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Um, the, there was a group that attempted to put in a 126 bed facility at the corner of Parthenia and Shoshone, I believe, in the Sherwood Forest area, the Sherwood Forest homeowners obviously fought and fought and fought and fought and fought. And when it came down to the, to the public's appeal of the approval of that facility, um, the, the City Planning Commission was reviewing the appeal. And one of the seven conditions had to do with landscaping requirements. And because they made an error in the plan that they submitted for the landscaping requirements, and it turned out one of the city planning commissioners was a landscaped architect that questioned that particular condition and found it was not in compliance, gave the city planning commission the only reason that they needed to deny the project, and it was denied. There's a city attorney that sits in on all those hearings before the planning commission, and they should have picked up on that and told them, you can't vote because you're in that kind of business. So, sorry, I didn't, I didn't uh, want to I'm not sure that that's how it really works. Well, if but, you, um, you know, if, uh, if a commissioner is an attorney, does that you know, would that prevent them from voting on something that's a legal item? I doubt it, you know. Yeah. Um, but, hey, listen, if it's contestable, you'd know I'd contest it. If there was a good reason for it, I'm just trying to share with you the one example of a condition not being met on exactly this type of project, and it was the reason that that project was denied. So those five conditions are, or seven conditions for the elder care facility, they all have to be met. Okay. Uh, no, wait. Uh, Jim had his hand up first, and then, then you were up. Go ahead, Jim. Yeah. Um, almost three parts. One is, is, you know, we went through another outreach meeting on, on those five points and, and things you get for entitlements. It might be good if we pull them out and have them as information for the stakeholders and the developers. So they're absolutely sure. I'm sure they will develop them and all, but it, it's nice to have everything out front on how this can be tonight because it is not a by right project, you know. Otherwise, they wouldn't be talking to us. I, I don't think it's up to us to offer advice on how to get it denied or how to get it approved. No. It, it's what, up to what, us to just provide well, information. Provide, right, that's what we're providing, is information on what they need to have us go through, okay? So everybody know, everybody should know that, right, Bill? And, and our client, well, the land use yeah, they have to understand that we're, we're just advisory. Right, right. We're not making any decisions. Right. But what we're doing is we're, we're, we're putting a package together that will move on to our board, and from our board it'll go to the planning commission. I'm not to the planning department. And it will be assigned to a zoning administrator, and that's the person who will be making the decisions. Right. Okay. Now, well, we uh, cannot... Ralph, Ralph had, was next. Several three points, but go ahead. I have a question in regards to what you're saying. If they denied it because of one particular thing, the um, landscaping was correct, could they correct the landscaping and resubmit or anything? Because that would start the whole process over again. They didn't meet the condition of the plan. End of story. Boy, I could see a big appeal coming on that one. How long ago was that? How long ago was that? that happen? That happened last year. Interesting. Mr. England did not, not jump on board to support the neighborhood until the 11th hour when he had Phyllis Winger come in and present his letter in support of the neighborhood supposing the project. Yes, Jim. Yes. I, I heard a comment earlier that well, we also have our, our uh, uh, 
legislative representative from the city sitting on, on the board, and we do. But when I was in that uh, lawsuit with Coles at the public hearings, he was the most, oh, he had no knowledge. He did not do anything. I will give you the report from that. So you hear the public hearing. Don't count on your city attorney uh, person in plan use. And ask Bill to defend the public, which is his job, because they don't. Okay? It's up to the neighborhood to defend themselves and up to us, too. He should be an, an expert in that field. Oh, this guy was and able to well, assist. Uh, I don't know. He, he, oh, he, okay. he wasn't it's even not, qualified not, for the not job. Not relevant to our. Well, I think it is relevant if you, if you think that. The, oh, we'll have a city attorney protecting our rights as a neighborhood. No, they're often, they, you know, they might not be on our side. I, I don't uh, count on city attorneys okay. to be the pro or con. That's not. They're supposed to follow the law, and sometimes the law is abused. Okay. All right. Anybody have any comments or questions on this? Do you re recall the technical bulletin I sent out and we talked about two meetings of it? Anything you want us to do between now and October? We just did. We prepared, so we were um, a little more knowledgeable than before on this particular ordinance. It's going to be in this room here. It's going to be in this room. Yeah. I don't expect that big a turnout. I could be wrong, but I don't. The technical bulletin again was a policy statement from the Office of the Zoning Administrator. And it goes on, and I'm going to briefly review it. You do not have a copy of this, so you had it last, last meeting. And the only things I want to point out to you is that they go into more than just this ordinance. They go into the whole process of approval, environmental review and project analysis, and what you have to do to go through environmental. And then project analysis, discuss the project design relative to applicable objectives of the residential citywide design guidelines. Compare the physical characteristics such as density, height, and setbacks against the applicable regulations. For projects that include higher densities than what is allowed by the underlying zone, locate nearby public transportation. So it goes into a lot more detail on what they have to do. Provide expanded analysis of density, including but not limited to the general plan land use general plan land use designation necessary to achieve the proposed density. The maximum allowable density through utilization of the density bonus ordinance. And then it goes specifically into what happens if the underlying land use designation is low residential, low medium, low medium to medium, and so on. And the minimum lot area per dwelling unit. This is all in the technical bulletin that was emailed to you two months ago and that we went through last meeting, so I'm not going to go through it again. But please, before the October meeting, review this again and refresh your minds on all of this which is the process through which the developer has to go in order to get this development considered by the zoning administrator does anybody want me to remail you the document okay i'll just re-email re it to everybody okay well the ordinance on the technical bulletin Get it on my desktop, but you're welcome to send it again. Okay. Well, you don't have to print it again, I guess, if you have it. We were supposed to be able to save all this paper by having it on computers, so I just keep printing more and more copies of it. Okay. Any other comments on this this topic before we go on? All right. Going right on. Committee member comment? Yes? I think the hearing before the zoning administrator will be in Van Nuys. So. Yeah, sure. Possibly. Yeah. Yeah. Are we going to do discussion and compilation of letters regarding the 
we are, we sort of already did before you arrived. Does anybody want to know any more about the letters? I have copies Lost of the letters. The okay. Email. Yes, and then uh, also I emailed you my letter about describing the process. Okay. Make yourself a copy there. You know. There's a copy machine. And um, okay, committee member comments on other items. Yes. Um, I'd like to ask. I don't. I remember some of you, but who all was at the uh, one meeting we had? And or the developers meeting at the Baptist Church. Who, who, who were there? I was there. Michael was there. You were there, weren't you? Bill Hopkins was there, was there, there at the church at, at the Bill developers meeting. You were there, weren't you? No. At the yeah, you remember that? You were, the you were there. Bill you were was there. sitting next to me at the church. <laughs> you remember that? Well, at the developers. There meeting. were five or six of us there. Sorry. Yeah, I thought so. Because uh, the one thing that. These, all these letters we're getting recently is that it was the developer said it was a slam dunk that no approval was required basically and I never heard I that never from the developer he didn't meeting. say that did he? he wouldn't I, be talking to us I guarantee you he wouldn't be talking to us right, if it was a slam dunk openness. and if it was by right right but so I don't remember him that. use permit and he has to have something of the neighborhood right back but I think what the yeah. Ray is uh, getting to and I wasn't there so I don't know is whether the developer said that because the letters all say that he said that. It, it doesn't matter if a developer says or lies or anything. Well, it is because these people that are writing us letters to our committee are saying the developer said this right. is a slam dunk, I don't need any approval, and I never heard the developer say that. Yeah. Well, important. that's our job to go through it and do it and tell them. Right. That right. And that's fun. what we're doing, and that's why if you go back, you know, an hour to why we don't want to start having meetings, sending things out too soon. We want to do the actual truth. We yeah, don't want to start answering every little thing and getting right. them thinking wrong. Right, but some of those people in that area are experts in some of the things, much better than we are. Uh, you have, when you get the environmental document, you have a couple, a doctor who's an environmental doctor in that area, you know, so it's always better to use them. And maybe you could come out all together and everybody get together and come out with something good, you know. Yeah, it's not yeah, it just concerns me though when we get 15 letters that all say exactly yeah, exactly. the same words yeah. and they all said the developer said uh -huh. and something I didn't hear the developer say. Well, then we go to the developer and, and ask them, did you ever say this? It's good they know. Well, you know, I, I would rather not I'm get in, I don't want to get into any kind of contention yeah. with people. You said, you did say, you didn't say, let's just. I, will, I try to address in this letter what the process is and uh, try to get everybody on the same page, at least as the process. So if people said they're not exempt, they are exempt, whatever, okay, here's, here's how it works and you're welcome to take part, of it, part in it. I just, I just wanted to find out if anybody remembered the developer saying that, that's all. Okay. I don't okay. The only other person you could email would be Bill. All right, guys, please, uh, let's go on. Any other committee member comments? Comment. Um, yeah, there's going to be that um, is it conversations with council, CD12, I think there's Jan going. going. That might be a good point to bring up if there are any traffic problems around there, because it's DOT and Valley traffic. Okay, yeah, and since this is the plumb committee, it's not, I didn't have time. Okay. Safety committee. There is also a thing of uh, some people wanting a stoplight on Haskell and Rinaldi, somewhere around there. Uh, I just picked it up through the surveys. Uh, and then, oh, wait, 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 wait. wait. traffic light where? Haskell and Rinaldi around there so they could go to the elementary school, uh, Daniel Elementary School. Okay, do you, you have that person's contact information? Yeah, I'll send it to you. Okay. And then I'll send you the surveys that are applicable to this. And you might pick up some other uh, survey people that have not contacted you. Okay, according to our minutes, you were going to bring that this time? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll email it to you tonight. Okay, great. Yes? Yeah, I was going to comment on the comments 
facility had set up a great system on the under uh, on the tunnel underneath Balboa, and they set it up so that they were going to have a real hazard. They're booby trapped as well. And I called the manager of police that came out here to find that, and he actually was a Okay, I got him to come up to break my name to learn to put four rocks up on the standard. All you do is touch one of the rocks, and all of a sudden you come down and get injured. Great way to dodge the dollars and more. And uh, I should give you a copy of what's going on because I think you're watching me. Hey, my name. I should have given you a copy of what's going on. It's an ongoing problem. It's planning language in a way because people are doing things that they should not be doing. Okay, no. When they're trying to get the city to do something, the city is blocking the driveway. So the water board board members also. Oh, right, man! Come on! 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 Come Apparently put it on the list now, and, and Ralph has given him a complete summary of the history of the problem. So I think hopefully that will help. So. The city district of the city district of Jersey, the city still unwilling to solve the problem. The professor from the city side of the engineering group, he and I have come up with a way of resolving the problem. Have they told you that uh, they're not doing anything or they're just no, not doing anything? Both of them. Hey, let's go, KB! So what KB, would you like to do? We're going to get together with the regulator. Hey, we're going to submit. Hey, they're going to and who's the we? You and uh, yeah. 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 All right. So, I guess what I'm getting to is thank you for the information. I know you've been working on this for a long time. I commend you for all the effort you have put into this. But, um, I'm not sure what you want Plum to do, other than I'll give you the form. Okay, all right, and I really do appreciate that. I sure hope that you triumph in the end. Well, and if you want us to write a letter or to call somebody, please, please let me know. I think you have to do that today. Okay. Because I'm working through it. Here's the real hazard, you know, mm -hmm. and they just told. Anyway, any other um, member comments? Okay, so the assignment for next month is to reread the ordinance, the technical bulletin, the permit application. Become as informed as you possibly can. Um, William, you said something about you knew of two instances. This particular one was in Sherwood Forest, was it? No, just the one incident. Okay. I know if one of Tarzan, I'll, I'll give you one. Try to find if it's still available the video uh, <coughs> or audio file of the meeting that will attach that part of okay. the condition that it came down to in the discussion. When well, it, wow! Just, I just, mean, just, you be, can do just that, before that would be great. it was next. Okay. All right. And Jim, if you can send us any information, the the broader the knowledge we have about these things, the better. Just other examples. Yeah. yeah. All right. Anybody have any other items? Otherwise, we are adjourned. Thank you very much. <laughs>